I didn't have a great experience when I was in school. I was bullied throughout primary and high school. Although I had friends, and I'm so grateful for them, and I'm still good friends with them now, I still struggled with identity because of the labels and the names and so on that people placed on me because of how I looked, how I spoke, what I wore, and the interests that I had. Now, I can't see any good reason for why they would do this. And sometimes, looking back, there just isn't good, any good reason why they treated me like they did. And it is unfair, and you might be going through this now. And sometimes it's just the way the world is. Don't you wish it was different? Is that the way it's intended to be? Is that the way we should aspire to treat other people? I was judged on my physical ability, my appearance, my intellectual abilities, and then these two things had a massive impact on my emotions. Last week I, I said we are all a big bag of emotions. And when you're in school with all these hormones bouncing around, it's, it is a very troubling time. When I was in school, it made me question who I am. What is my purpose? Do I have any worth in the world? Every young person asks these questions in one way or another at multiple times throughout school and even beyond into adult life. Things like, where do I fit in? Who am I? And what am I doing here? I can remember being taken aside by my granddad and being presented with two choices during this time. Number one, he says you can let them beat you up and let your experience swallow you up and spit you out all chewed up and messed up. Or option two, you can stop thinking about what they think of you and become the best person you can be. I think they are incredibly wise words from someone I admired as a good and gentle man. And so I chose number two, but in hindsight, I possibly, looking back, I possibly got my motivations all mixed up. They were all wrong. And let me explain. I chose to work hard to become as good or better than those around me. I wanted to be first. I wanted to be the first pick anyone made on any team at any sport. Be better than them at drama, singing, music, reading or writing. By the time I was in year 10, I was on the school football team, cricket team, rugby team and competing for Denbyshire in Wales schools district sports days in javelin, pole vault and high jump. I was playing for North Wales roller hockey team. And that's just sport. Outside of school, I had performed in a professional production in Liverpool. I had performed solos in Manchester Opera House, the London Palladium and Her Majesty's Theatre and many others besides. I don't say this to brag. I use it to make a point and here it is. I thought that if I'm good at many things or the best at something, I would be accepted. However, this didn't happen and only made things worse. I was crushed. I was crushed because I did it for them and not myself, for my own enjoyment, for my own fulfillment. All of my self-worth and esteem was wrapped up and based on what they thought of me rather than what I thought of myself. I had done all of this for the wrong reasons. I had achieved these things for the wrong reasons and I still wasn't accepted. I missed out on the joy of learning and being good at something for myself. And again, this led me to question, what more can I possibly do to be 
accepted. At the beginning of the hockey season in 2003 to 2004, I moved hockey teams from Rill to St. Asif. When I moved, I could not explain the difference. Not, not in skill, quality or ability, but the feel. There was something different. It was tangible, you could feel it. There was something different in the attitude in the atmosphere, the way the team treated each other. And when I first moved, the welcome and acceptance I received on day one of joining was just bizarre, but so foreign to me, it was so out of my experience. They, things like they didn't swear, they didn't poke fun at each other, they were genuinely kind and friendly. And believe it or not, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. All I had ever experienced was the opposite. I didn't know what to do with it. And so in the middle of getting ready, kitting up as we used to call it for a training day one Sunday afternoon, I finally asked them, I kind of blurted it out, what's the deal with you guys? That one question, that one question, what's the deal, started me on a journey that has led me to where I am today, speaking to you about an identity that encompasses everything, my physical, my intellectual, my emotional identity through my spiritual identity. I see my physical, intellectual and emotional identity through my spiritual lenses of identity. My team invited me to their youth group, which was held in a church every Friday night, where games were played, friends were made, and talks were given. These talks revolved around a spiritual identity, and that this spiritual identity informs and, sh and shaped the other three physical, intellectual, and emotional attributes to who I am as a being. It's, but they spoke about things of how God loves, loved me and loves us. How God, what God did to show us, me, his love in Jesus. How God views us, how God wants us, how God wants us to view ourselves in him. There are a few Bible verses that I want to share with you. The first is from 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says this, from this time on, we do not think of anyone as the world does. It is true that in the past, we thought of Christ as the world thinks, but we no longer think of him in that way. If anyone belongs to Christ, then he is made new. The old things have gone. Everything is made new. All this is from God through Christ Jesus. God made peace between us and himself and God gave us the work of bringing everyone into peace with him. That's an amazing, amazing thing. Our old life can be brushed away and we are given and given a new life through Christ. Another scripture is found in 1 John chapter 3 verse 1. See what great love the Father has lavished, lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. That is if we consider Jesus our Lord and Saviour. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 it says, So in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. It is that faith through in Jesus and that belief in Jesus that we are made 
children of God and given a new identity and made a new creation, a new life. But what does this mean? What does it mean to be a child of God? Well, I believe that there is one place in the Bible that tells you just how deep God knows us because he created you, he created me. He created everything you see, touch, smell and hear and taste. And in Psalm 139, it speaks particularly about us people. And it says this, Lord, you have examined me. You know all about me. You know when I sit down and when I get up. You know my thoughts before I think them. You know where I go and where I lie down. You know everything I do. Lord, even before I say a word, you already know what I'm going to say. You are all around me in front and behind. You have put your hand on me. Your knowledge is amazing to me. It is more than I can understand. Where can I go to get away from your spirit? Where can I run from you? If I go up to the skies, you are there. If I lie down with the dead, ah, oh, you are there. If I rise with the sun in the east and settle in the west beyond the sea, even there, you would guide me. With your right hand, you would hold me. I could say, the darkness will hide me. The light around me will turn into night. But even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as light as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made my whole being. You formed me in my mother's womb. I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful. I know this very well. You saw my bones being formed as I took shape in my mother's body. When I was put together there, you saw my body as it was formed. All the days planned for me were written in your book before I was one day old. You see, God creates and has created billions of individuals, yet gave each one their looks, their strength, personality, and potential. He knows everyone before they were born. He knew their name and the kind of person they would become now, if you are a believer, you can live in confidence that God doesn't make junk and that every one of us is a unique masterpiece of his creative genius. Although God created everyone unique and with great potential, our full potential can only be fully reached when we are in relationship with God through faith. In Jesus. When I look back to my hockey team's example and their attitude towards one another, I know now what they knew, that everyone in that team was unique and special in God's sight. It was a way in which they thanked God and honoured God by fulfilling their, but also now my, ultimate purpose, and that is loving him, honoring him, thanking him. Jesus teaches 
how best to honor God for what he does for those who place their faith and hope in his son, Jesus Christ. He says this in Matthew 22, 37, 39. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great command, greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So we become a child of God. And when we become a child of God, we take on a new identity, an identity that he gives us. And then we thank and praise and give worth to God for what he has done. And we do that by loving him with all our heart. Only in God can we really find our true identity. So it's to love God more than anything else and love other people as you love yourself. This is a tall order and it isn't easy but that is what a child of God does. I became a child of God at the age of 15. I don't know what age you are now. I stopped caring or accepting what others said of me or how they saw me. I began rejecting what I believed about myself and only focused on how God sees me. Loved, cherished, treasured his son. For you, it might be his daughter. No one can separate me, no one can separate you from the love of God once he takes you under his wing. There will be those who try, but you can stand secure in the knowledge that you are loved, cherished, treasured, and a son or daughter of God. When we find ourselves depending on others for approval, we don't allow God to speak the truth of who we are over us. We should never forget that the ultimate creator, God of the universe, has uniquely created you and me. There are so many things I haven't said. If you are a believer, I think you might know these things, but if you are not a believer, then there is a strong chance you don't know these things. And so in the following weeks, we will be breaking these things down. We have one more week left of identity in which we will be looking at the identity of God. Because to truly understand the significance of being a child of God, we need to know who God is or understand who God is as explained in the Bible. So, tune in next week.